Hello everyone, in this video I am going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 2 Extended in a session October-November 2023 Paper 2-2. So let's start with the first question. Question number 1, write this digit part A correct to two decimal place. The two decimal place are 0 and 7. So after 7 we have 8, 8 is more than 5 so we have to round up adding 1 and 7 to make 8. So this is 24.08. Now for part B correct to the nearest tenths. The digit at the tenths place is uh, 4 which is, uh, sorry the digit at the tenth. This, the, uh, this is a digit at the ones place and this is at the tenths place. So this is a digit at the tenths place. And the next digit is 4, it is less than 5. So we have to round down, we have to keep the 2 as it is and replacing all the rest of the digits with zeros. So the 4 is um, replaced with 0 and then 0. 0. 0. 0.00000. So 20.000 is just 20. Question number 2, write down the number that is 9 greater than negative 23. 9 greater than negative 23 so 9 subtract 23 basically which is minus 14 question number 3 we have v which is equals to u plus 80 find the value of v when u is 30 a is negative 2 and t is equals to 7 so we have to solve for v when the u is 30 plus the a is negative 2 and t is equals to 7 so this is going to be 30 and minus 2 times 7 is 14. From 30 take away 14 is 16. So the V is 16. Question number 4. Write 62,000 millimeters into kilometers. So here we have to use the conversion of kilometers and millimeters. So we know that 1 kilometer is equals to 1 million with six zeros millimeters we have to find the answer for this much of millimeters right so what is one millimeters one millimeter equals to one over one million kilometers so 62,000 millimeters is equals to 62,000 over one million kilometer right so 62,000 divide 1 million 0 0.062 kilometers question number 5 the diagram shows two intersecting straight lines crossing two parallel lines find the value of x so here we have to use the concept of uh, the first is alternate um, vertically opposite angle. If this angle is 50, this angle is also equals to 50. These are two vertically opposite angles. Vertically opposite angles are equal. Right? This is 50, this is 50, right? And the next thing is x plus 50. The sum of this angle is equals to 114. These are two alternate angles. So we can say the sum of x plus 50. This is equals to 114. And what is x? x is 114 take away 50 114 minus 50 this is 64 degrees question number six part a explain why 111 is not a prime number 111 is not a prime number if it is not a prime number it means it is divisible by um, the number other than 1 in itself right so it, this is obvious that one, uh, 1 11 is not divisible by 2 let's see I guess it is divisible by 3 yes 37 and divisible by 37 as well it means yes um, uh, 
we can say that 111 is not a prime number because it is divisible by 3 and 37. Now for part B, find the prime number between 110 and 120. 110, we have 111. 111 is not a prime number. 112 is also not a prime number. It is divisible by 2. 113 is a prime number, I guess, because it is not divisible by 2, 3, or any other number. It has only two factors, 1 and 113. 114 is divisible by 2. 115 is divisible by 3, I guess. Mm -hmm. by 4 5 yes it's divisible by 5 116 is divisible by 2 117 let's me check it is divisible by 3 118 by 2 and 119 is by 3 no, 119 by 4 119 by 5 119 by 6 119 by 7 it is divisible by 7 yes the only prime number between 110 and 120 is 113 now question number 7 find the bearing of q from p the bearing of q from p so from the north line of p to this angle we have to calculate right so here let me extend the lines to visualize the situation the two north lines let me extend and this straight line so as we know this is a right angle right north is always perpendicular to east right so if this angle is 39 what is that angle so this angle is 90 degree minus 39 degrees So 90 take away 39 is 51. So this angle is 51. Now consider the concept of alternate angles. These are the two parallel lines. So this angle is 51. This angle is also equals to 51. These are the two alternate angles. Now, how can you calculate the bearing? The bearing is going to be from, of Q from P. This is the straight line. The straight line is 180. So, in 180, we have to add this 51 degrees. 180 plus 51 is 231. So, 231 degrees is the bearing. Okay. So let me explain one more time. The first thing is uh, the north is perpendicular to the east. So it is 90 degree. So if this angle is 39, this angle is going to be 51. 90 minus 39 is going to be 51. So if I extend the straight line and the two parallel lines and using the concept of alternate angles, this angle is 51 and the alternate angle is also 51 because they are equal. And the bearing we have to calculate the straight line is equals to 90 and add up to this angle which is 51 so we will get the bearing. Moving to question number 8 without using calculator we have to work out you must show all your working and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. Right. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25 out of 8. Minus 4 times 1 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7 out of 4. Now make the same denominators by multiplying 4 by 2 and 7 by 2. So this is 25 out of 8 minus 14 over 8. 4 times 2 is 8 and 7 times 2 is 14. Now from 25 take away 14, we have 25 minus 14. From 5 take away 4 is 1 and 2 take away 1 is 1 so it is 11 out of 8 and in the mixed number we have 8 times 1 is 8 9 10 11 3 by 8 so this is the answer in its simplest form question number 9 write 90 as a product of its prime factors we have to find the prime factorization of 90 basically 
so let me write down the prime factors of 90 by dividing it with the prime number starting with the 90 2 times 4 is 8 2 times 5 is 10 and we have uh, 3 3 times 1 is 3 and 3 times 5 is 15 3 times 5 is 15 and 5 times 1 is 5 so the prime factorization of 90 is going to be 2 into 3 into 3 into 5 so 2 into 3 square times 5 this is a prime factorization question number 10 expand and simplify so this is 2t plus 2w plus 3w minus 3t Simplify the t terms and the constant terms 2t minus 3t and the w term, sorry, plus 2w plus 3w. So 2 plus 3 is going to be 5w, sorry, this is w, and minus t. Question number 11, the two shapes are mathematically similar. This information we have given. Part A, find the value of h. We have to find the value of h. If they are mathematically similar, it means the ratio of their corresponding sides are equal. So the ratio of h and its corresponding side is 6.3. h over 6.3, this is equals to 5 over 9. And solve for h, which is 5 by 9 and times it by 6.3. The cross multiplication I did over here. So 5 by 9 times 6.3. This is 3.5. The H is 3.5 centimeters. Now for part B, the area of the smaller shape is 16 centimeters square. We have given. Calculate the area of the larger shape. So by using the concept of similarity that uh, area of a larger we have to calculate. So keep it in the numerator. Area of large over area of small. This is going to be. Uh, the larger one, let's take 9 and 5 or you can take 6.3 and uh, 3.5. This is your choice. I'm taking 9 and 5. The larger is 9. Any uh, side of the similar, mathematically similar shape you can take. So 9 and 5 I'm using over 5. It's whole square. Now area of large is going to be area of a small is multiplying with 9 over 5 square times area of a smaller is 16 we have given just plug the values and simplify 9 by 5 square of answer and times by 16 this is 51.84 centimeter square question number 12 the diagram shows a speed time graph for 16 seconds of a car's journey the speed and time and the time is 16 seconds. Part A, calculate the deceleration of the car in the final 4 seconds. The final 4 seconds are between 12 to 16 seconds. The deceleration we have to calculate. The deceleration is basically negative of acceleration. So it is already given deceleration. So we are not using the negative sign. When we have given acceleration in the final 4 seconds, then we have it is decreasing. So then we have to uh, put the negative sign in the answer. Okay, the deceleration we have to calculate. So in the final 4 seconds, we have uh, the speed is 10. So that is equals to 10 out of 4. This is the deceleration. The change in y over change in x. The y values change is uh, 10 and the x values change is 4. So 10 out of 4 or in decimal you can say 5 by 2 or 2.5. All three answers are correct. Now for part B, find the total distance traveled by 16 seconds. The total distance traveled is basically the area under the curve. So as you can see, the shape looks like a trapezium. So the total distance 
traveled is its area of a trapezium this shape look like a trapezium you can do as a trapezium if you know the formula of trapezium area of a trapezium if you do not know then you can break the shape into a rectangle and a, a triangle right both are also correct you can add them up uh, let me do by both ways so by first way if I can do the area of a rectangle is this is 12 and this is 10 so 10 times 12 area of a rectangle plus this is the area of a triangle triangle area is half base and height the base is gonna be 12 to 4 uh, 16 is 4 and the height is 10 let me calculate both answers are same so 10 times 12 is 120 plus 4 times 10 divided by 2 this is 20 so 120 plus 20 is 140 okay by the second way we can say the total distance traveled is area of a trapezium which is half into the sum of two parallel sides this side is 12 and this side is 16 12 plus 16 multiply by the height the height is 10 you can see the height is 10 let me calculate 12 plus 16 times it by 10 divided by 2 is 140. So you will get the same answer from both methods. Question number 13, part A, we have 3 exponent 3p times 3 exponent 2p equals to 729. Find the value of p. So you have to just simplify. When this we have same basis, we can add the powers. So we have 3 and its power is going to be 3p plus 2p. And we have to shift uh, 729 into the power of 3. Okay. Hmm. 729. Wait. 3 power 5. 3 exponent 6 is 729. So 3 exponent 6 is going to be 729. So on both sides of equality, we have the same base 3 and 3. We can just compare the powers and solving for p. So, let me do one more step. 3, x power is going to be 5p and this is 3 power 6. Now we can compare the powers. 5p equals to 6, right? 5p equals to 6 and the value of p is going to be 6 by 5. Or, you can see, sorry, it's 6 by 5, not 5 by 6. It is 1.2. Now for part B, we have to simplify this. So it is going to be 32 is 1 over 5, splitting the powers x exponent 10, power is 1 by 5. 5 times 1 is 5, 5 times 2 is 10 and the fifth root of 32, 32 exponent 1 by 5 is 2, 2 x squared is the answer. This is all you can, if you want to simplify it further, this is 2 power 5 is 32. It is 1 by 5 and this is x square. 5 is cancelled with 5 or we can say 2x square is the answer. Question number 14, we have given y equals to 2w square minus x. Rearrange the formula to write w the subject. So we have to make w the subject. So y plus x is equals to 2w square. Just shift x on the other side, it becomes positive x. So y plus x divided by 2, this is equals to w squared, dividing by 2 on both sides. And to solve for w from here, we have to do the square root on both sides. So this is going to be plus minus square root of y plus x divided by 2. So plus minus square root y plus x divided by 2. Question number 15, part A, on the Venn diagram, shade the region P union Q complement. Okay, this is P and Q complement is a region that is outside of Q, other than Q and we have to find out its union. So, the region outside of Q and the P is uh, the whole answer, right? The P, this is the P. Right, and it's union with Q complement the region outside of Q.
this is going to be the shaded one now for part b we have given the number of elements in a universal set which is equals to 20 the total elements are 20 the number of elements in a union b complement this is one this is a and this is b the union of a and b and its complement is the region that is outside so it is just one over here and the number of elements in a are 12 and the number of elements in b are 10 and we have to complete the Venn diagram okay so let's see in a the elements are 12 minus some x in intersection we have some x and in b we have 10 minus x because number of elements in a would be 12 so this is 12 this is going to be 12 minus x intersection is x and in b we have 10 minus x intersection is x and the outer one is 1 and the total we have given equals to 20 and let me solve for x the sum of all the of them equals to 20 to solve for x 12 minus x plus x plus 10 minus x plus 1 this is going to be 20 right, let me simplify so plus x and minus x is cancelled 12 plus 10 plus 1 12 plus 10 plus 1 is 23 23 minus x equals to 20 so 23 shifting the 20 on the other side becomes minus 20 and shifting the x on the other side becomes plus x 23 minus 20 is 3 so 3 equals to the x okay so the intersection is 3 and 12 minus 3 this is equals to 9 and 10 minus 3 is 7 the Venn diagram is completed. Question number 16. Find the lowest common multiple LCM of 10x8 and 8x12. So 12x8 and 8x12. So write down the prime factorization of 12x8. 12 is 2 times um, 6 is 12. So 2 times of 6. 6 is not a prime number. 6 is 2 times 3 times x exponent 8 and 8 x exponent 12 this is going to be uh, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 times x exponent 12 okay so we have to find LCM so for LCM pick the common factors which is 2 and 2 and 3 and 2 are left so we can say the LCM of 12 x exponent 8 and 8 x exponent 12 this is going to be 2 is common and 2 is common and the rest of uncommons are 2 and 3 so 2 times 3 and times it by x exponent the highest power in lcm we have to pick the highest power which is x exponent 12 and then if they you have to find the hcf then you have to pick the lower power right so 2 times 2 times 2 times 3, this is 24. So 24x exponent 12 is the LCM. Question number 17. We have A, B and C are the points on a circle. Center is O. Angle O, B, A. O, B and A is 28 degrees. Find angle A, C, B. So the angle A, C, B, A, C and B, this angle we have to calculate. So what information we have given? We have given that O, A and O, B, these are the two radii. So they are same. So angle A and angle B is same, which is also equals to 28 degrees. So angle triangle A, O, B is an isosceles triangle. Two sides are same, two angles are same. And sum of all angles of a triangle add up to 180 to get the angle O, right? So we can say the angle, angle O, Angle A is 28 degrees, angle B is 28 degrees, the sum of all three equals to 180. And we can get angle O, which is equals to 180 minus 28 minus 28. 180 minus 28 minus 28, this is 124 degrees. So this angle is 124 degrees, right? So A, O, B, this is 124, the angle at the center. So A, B, A, C, B, right? A, O, B, 
is 124 this is the angle at the center so ACB is half of the angle at the center which is equals to we can say ACB is half of 124 which is gonna be divided by 2 62 degrees right so first concept here we have to use uh, the isosceles triangle because uh, OA and OB are the two radii. So two sides are same, two angles are same. Then the next concept we have to use that the sum of all angles of a triangle add up to 180 to get the angle O. And the next con the third concept we have to use over here that uh, uh, the angle at the uh, center is half of the angle at the circumference when they are subtended by the same arc. The, a the arc is AB. So AOB and ACB they are subtended by the same arc so if the center is 124 then the circumference is half of 124 which is 62 degrees I hope this makes sense now now moving to part B uh, we have given P Q and R are the points on a circle we have P Q and R T U is tangent to the circle at P T U is a tangent to the circle at point P and the angle T P R T P and R is 20 is 47 degrees and uh, P R and Q is 52 degrees we have to find the angle P R P Q R P and Q this angle we have to calculate so here we have to use a concept of um, and uh, alternate segment theorem the first concept we're going to use is alternate segment theorem So according to alternate segment theorem, uh, 47 is the angle that uh, is made between the chord and the tangent. So the angle between the chord and the tangent is equals to the angle in the alternate segment. This is also equals to 47 degrees. Then the next concept we're going to use is angle. Sum of all angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 52 degree plus 47 degree plus angle P this is equals to 180 so let me solve for angle P which is 180 minus 52 minus 47 so 180 minus 52 minus 47 this is 81 degrees So just two concepts I used over here. The first is alternate segment theorem and the second is sum of all angles of a triangle add up to 180 to get the angle RPQ. Question number 18. A solid cylinder has a radius of 5 cm and the height of 8 cm. Calculate the total surface area of a cylinder. So the formula of surface area of a cylinder, surface area of cylinder, it has a formula which is equal to 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r square right so 2 pi the radius is 5 and the height is 8 plus 2 pi the radius is 5 square now 2 pi is common we have 5 times 8 plus 5 times 5 let me simplify this further 5 times 8 is 40 plus 5 times 5 25 which is going to be 65 so 2 pi into 65 65 is multiplied by 2 pi this is 130 pi or we can say 408.4 so 408 408.41 centimeter square or you can just keep 408.4 Question number 19, find the nth term of each sequence. Number A, so let me find out the difference between the terms. The difference between 11 and 8 is 8 minus 11 is negative 3, subtracting 3. We have 5 minus 8 is negative 3. 2 minus 5 is again negative 3. 
and minus 1 minus uh, subtract 2 is again negative 3 so the difference is negative 3 when the difference is same it means this is an arithmetic sequence so the nth term formula for arithmetic sequence is a n equals to a plus n minus 1 into d right so a is the first term which is gonna be a n a is the first term is 11 plus n minus 1 and d is the common difference which is negative 3 so this is going to be 11 minus 3 n and plus 3 so 11 plus 3 is uh, 11 13 14 sorry 11 plus 3 is 11 12 13 14 so it is 14 minus 3 n is the nth term formula for this sequence now moving to part b uh, let me find out okay as you can see, 1, 5, 25, 1, 25, 6, 25, it's a power. So this is 5 power 0 is 1, 5 power 1 is 5, 5 squared is 25, 5 cube is 125, 5 exponent 4 is, sorry, 5 exponent 4, this is 625. So this these are the powers of 5. So the nth term is... 5 exponent not n because when n is 1 it is 0 so n minus 1 for the first term we have n is 1 so 1 minus 1 this is 0 for second term 1 minus 2 right for sorry for the first term we have 1 so 1 minus 1 for second term 2 minus 1 third term 3 minus 1 so you will get all the terms of the sequence so this is 5 x uh, 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 5 exponent n minus 1 Question number 20. The area of a rectangle is 555.2 cm square, correct to one decimal place. The area of a rectangle we have given here. The length of a rectangle is 9 cm, correct to the nearest centimeter. Calculate the upper bound of the width of the rectangle. Right. So we know that area of a rectangle is the product of length and width. So we have to solve for the width. So the width is going to be area over the length. This is going to be the width. So the width is in the quotient area over width and the length. So we have to find the upper bound. So the upper bound of uh, the width is it means the upper bound of the numerator but the lower bound of denominator we need right the upper bound of area and the lower bound of length we need right so the area is 55.2 centimeter square correct to one decimal place it means for upper bounds we, one decimal place is 0 0.1 so we have to divide it by two and correct to the nearest centimeter one centimeter is one over two right so area is 55.2 so work on the upper bound the upper bound of area is it means we have to add one decimal place is 0 0.1 and for the upper bounds or lower bounds we have to divide it by 2 so this is going to be 0 0.1 divided by 2 is 0 0.05 and add 55.2 this is 55.25 55.25 and now let's work on the width the width lower bound width is 9 for lower bound we have to subtract and it is correct to 1 centimeter 1 centimeter it means 1 by 2 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 1 by 2 0 0.5 9 subtract answer which is 8.5 now let me substitute it into the formula so the lower bound of width sorry the upper bound of it sorry the area upper bound is 55.25 divided by 8.5 55.25 divides 8.5 6.5 is the answer centimeter Question number 21, the line y equals to x plus 1 intersects the curve, the quadratic curve, at two points. Find the coordinates of the two points. The line intersects the curve. 
at two points. So we have to find the point of intersections. So y is equal to x plus 1 substituted into the second equation. So it is x squared plus x minus 3. This is equal to y which is x plus 1. Now shifting all the terms to the left side. x squared plus x minus x minus 3 minus 1 equals to 0. I just shift the x on the other side. It becomes negative x and 1 becomes minus 1. So plus x and minus x is cancelled. x squared minus 4 equals to 0. So this is x square minus 2 square so we have to use a formula of difference of square a square minus b square would be a plus b into a minus b let me write down the formula over here so a square minus b square this is a plus b into a minus b the two factors so this is x plus 2 and x minus 2 equals to 0 so we have to put both factors separately equals to 0 x plus 2 equals to 0 and x minus 2 equals to 0 so from here the x value is negative 2 and x value is positive 2 so we have two x components 2 and minus 2 right now let me solve for the y components the y component we have to use the equation y equals to x plus 1 so what is y when x is equals to 2 plus 1 so this is 3 and what is y when x equals to negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1? So here we have 3 and here we have negative 1. The two coordinates are 2, 3 and minus 2, minus 1. These are the two points of intersections of the curve and uh, the line. Question number 22. x is inversely proportional to square root of w. Okay. So x is inversely proportional to square root of w when x is when w is 16 x equals to 3 find x when uh, in terms of w right so when x is inversely proportional to square root of w so it means x is equals to some constant of proportionality k times 1 over square root of w we have to find the constant of proportionality by using this information w is 16 and x is 3 right so what is k? Cross multiplication. x times square root of w. This is going to be the k. x is 3 times square root of 16 is 4. So 3 times 4. This is equal to 12. The k is 12. Right? Now the next is we have to find x in terms of w. So what is x? x is equal to 12 over square root of w. This is x in terms of w. Question number 23. Some students record their uh, reaction times. The table shows the results reaction times in seconds and the frequency on the histogram. The height of the block for 0 to 6 interval is 7.5 centimeter calculate the height of the block from 6 to 10 interval so for histogram we need the frequency densities and we know that the formula of frequency density is frequency over the class width so let me find out the class width of the interval 0 to 6 is 6 and from 6 to 10 the class width is 4 the difference between 0 and 6 and 0 and 10 a class width right let me find out the frequency density first which is frequency divided by the class width the frequency of the interval from 0 to 6 is 18 and the class width is 6 and 6 times 3 is 18 we have 3 but we have given that the height of the block for the interval 0 to 6 is 7.5 how this height is 7.5 Height is 7.5 for the first interval, right? And this is going to be the frequency density is times by some number to get 7.5. So frequency density is 3. So 3 times what makes 7.5? Okay. 7.5 divided by 3. This is 2.5. So frequency density times by 2.5 you will get 7.5 double check 3 times 2.5 this is 7.5 the height for the first interval now let me find the height of the second interval by using the same formula the height 
of the second interval is frequency density multiplied by 2.5. What is the frequency density? Which is frequency over the class width. The frequency is 16. The class width is 4. So this is 16 out of 4 times by 2.5. 16 by 4 is 4 times 2.5. This is 10. 10 centimeter is the height of the interval of the block from 6 to 10 the interval. Question number 24 we have to simplify. So let me take a common from the numerator. x minus 2 is left and negative 1 is common. x minus 2 is left. And in the denominator again using the difference of square formula which is a square minus b square which is equals to a plus b into a minus b which is a square minus 1 square so which is a plus 1 and a minus 1 for the simplification a minus 1 is the factor x minus 2 is the factor and in the denominator a plus 1 and a minus 1 cancel the like factors the like factors are a minus 1 the simplified answer is x minus 2 over a plus 1 question number 25 the derivative of this is equals to this the derivative we have given find the value of a and the value of k so it means d over dx of 2a x exponent 7 this is equals to 42 x exponent 6 the first term derivative with the first right so x power is 7 now it is x power is 6 how can i took the derivative so this is basically 2a stays the same x exponent 7 derivative is 7 x to the power 6 so we have 2 times 7 is 14a x to the power 6 x to the power 6 is same so 42 equals to 14a let me compare to solve for a 42 equals to 14a 42 out of 14 is the a 42 divides 14 this is 3 so 3 is the a value right so let me explain one more time i took the derivative the first term derivative equals to the first so 2 a x power 7 is that derivative so differentiate 2 a stays the same x power 7 derivative is 7 x power 6 2 times 7 is 14 a x power 6 now comparing x power 6 with a constant 40 42 a 42 and 14 a so to solve for a right now let me do the same thing for the second term the derivative d over dx of 3x exponent k this derivative is equals to 15 x exponent k minus 1 right okay now let me differentiate this so 3 stays the same the k x power k minus 1 uh, the power base and power minus 1 yes this is equals to 15 x power k minus 1 so now x power k minus 1 stays the same just simplify the constants so we have 3k equals to 15 so what is k k equals to 15 out of 3 3 times 5 is 15 so this is equals to 5 k is 5 and a equals to 3 Question number 26. The diagram shows a parallelogram O, P, Q, T. The position vector of P is A and the position vector of T is B. K is on P, Q. K is a point which is on P, Q. So that P to K is and K to Q are in the ratio of 3 by 1. Okay. So it means um, P, K is 3 by 4 of pq and k to uh, q is 1 by 4 of pq the line ok o to k and uh, t to q t to q are extended to meet at x find the position vector of x in terms of a and b give your answer in its simplest form position vector of x is basically we have to find o x okay since um, we have given that the diagram is a parallelogram so it means o p is a then t q is also a 
if O to T is B, then P to Q is also B, right? So we can say this is also B. So PK is 3 by 4 of B. And K to Q is 1 by 4 of B. All right. So now we have to find the position vector of x in terms of a, b. Position vector of x is o to x we have to calculate. So o to x. o to x follows the path of o to t. t to q. And q to x. Alright. Now o x. o to t is b t to q is a but we don't know about qx so this is my first equation so the first thing is we have to solve for qx now how can we solve for qx so uh, if i consider this triangle q x k and the bigger triangle o t and x let me draw these two triangles separately okay The bigger one is O, T, X. And the smaller one is Q, K, X. This is Q, X and K. Now these two are similar triangles. Right triangle inside the the smaller triangle is inside the bigger one so these two triangles are mathematically similar so we have to use a concept of similarity so let me label all the sides this side is a sorry b okay and this side is a and we have q somewhere here and this side is 1 by 4 of b and we don't know that side as well, right? So we have to calculate what is Qx, right? So we have to do the uh, concept of similarity. So according to the concept of similarity, uh, the ratios of um, the corresponding sides are equal. So it means Qx over Qt, uh, sorry, Tx. Qx over Tx. This is equals to Q, K and O to T. Or we can say uh, K to Q over O to T. Right. So again, I'm using the concept of similarity because the triangle, the smaller triangle inside the bigger triangle, uh, the two triangles are similar. So why I'm using the concept of similarity? Because this is a smaller triangle and this lies inside the bigger triangle. So these two triangles are similar. So when two triangles are mathematically similar, we can use a concept of similarity. The ratios of their corresponding sides are equal. So the ratio of Q to X and the ratio of T to X is equal to the ratio of k q and o t right let me substitute the values now q x we don't know so keep it as it is over q to t is basically a and plus q x and this is going to be uh, 1 by 4 of b over this is just b o t is b right so V is cancelled with B. This is just 1 by 4. Do the cross multiplication. Qx equals to A plus Qx into 1 by 4. Mm. So Qx is equals to A 1 by 4 of A plus 1 by 4 of Qx. Simplifying the Qx, so Qx is minus 1 by 4 of Qx. So shifting the Qx on the other side, it becomes negative. This is equals to 1 by 4 of A. So what is 1 minus 1 by 4? This coefficient is 1, this is 1 by 4. 1 minus 1 by 4, this is 3 by 4 of Qx yeah, equals to 1 by 4 of A. Right? 4 is cancelled with 4, so Qx 
is equals to 1 by 3 of a. I divide the 3 on the other side. We got the value of qx. So just substitute the value of qx into the first equation. You can easily get the o, um, the position vector of x. So o to x is b plus a plus qx. That is 1 by 3 of a. So a plus 1 by 3a is b plus this is 4 by 3 of a. So that is the position vector of x in terms of ab, which is 4 by 3 of a plus b. I hope this is clear now. So that was the last question of our paper. If you have any queries, please let me in a comment section and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Take care.